hello students once again i welcome you all to the second lecture of the chapter of your grade 6 which is motion and measurement of distance okay so in the previous lecture we have already seen about measurements that what is the need of measurement and what are the standard units of measurement and then we have seen what uh, how to measure the length correctly and then ended our topic with the measurement of a curved line that is by a thread method now we are we are moving to the next part of this chapter which is the motion or types of motion which we observe in day to day life okay so let's start with the topic motion yeah so now we are in this class concerned about motion only we have done the uh, talking about measurement now we are concerned about motion okay so what we what topics we are going to cover here we are going to cover <clears throat> this example of moving things around us and another topic is types of motion those these top, two topics we are going to cover okay so if i give you an example suppose uh, list all the objects you see in your day to day life around you suppose you can talk about school bag you can talk about your car you can talk about any bus or you can talk about any chair you can talk about any person who is sitting on a chair so everything you can observe has some work or have something to do with that yeah so just list the objects which are changing their position yeah list the objects suppose if i am talking about your house does your house change your position no does the clock which is hang on the wall change its position no yeah if i talk about the school bag school bag the school bag is changing its position why because you are taking it from your home to school and come back also to the home yeah and if i talk about the cars moving on road they are also moving so you can list anything or every object around you some may be moving some may not be moving okay so we are now concerned with examples of moving things around us but i have given you some list of um, things which are not moving that is house clock road you can take the example of road road, road is also a constant yeah it is not moving road is not moving you are moving on the road okay so you can list uh, numerous number of examples regarding this uh, moving things around us so first of all see these pictures what you are seeing the picture on the left is showing a beautiful white pigeon who is just flying so whenever any bird flies it is just moving you can simply say it is moving and you can also observe that whenever birds are you observe in your sky they are continuously moving or changing their place now the picture on the right is showing the motion of ant the picture on the right is showing the motion of ant so if i take this ant particular ant suppose i am taking this ant if i am tracing the motion of this single ant you will trace the motion like this if you carefully observe it just take one ant out of these numerous ants and observe its motion the motion will be like this zigzag or something like that so it is also changing its position yes or no so these are the examples of moving things around us which constantly changes their position as the time progresses yes or no you can see one example here also you can see a clock here yeah the second hand of a clock is moving continuously can you see it is moving continuously like this and in the right picture you can see a rocket or a satellite which started its journey from earth now started its journey from earth move towards the another satellite or another moon you can say and then landed on the moon so also it has changed its position with the time okay so there are various objects around us which are changing their position uh, with the time or they are moving actually they are moving actually so that is something to do with the topic which we are going to study which is known as motion so how to define motion if i say how to define motion so if i'll simply say if any body or any object is changing its position any object is changing its position with time so as the time progresses if the object is changing its position with time then that object is said to be in motion then that object is said to be in motion basically okay so whenever any object changes its position with respect to time it is said to be in motion position can be changed by several ways suppose i am talking about a car suppose a car is moving on a road car is moving on a road suppose at a particular time it is at a position like this so it is at a position a now after some time it as it is traveling towards right it will 
be present somewhat here after some time yes or no suppose it is b after another another interval of time it will be somewhat here yes or no it will be somewhat here so it is constantly changing its position with the time so we will say the car is in motion okay so if i talk about clock does the clock changing its position no so we can't say the clock is in motion we can't say the clock is in motion so class clock is not in motion because it is constantly hanging on the wall of your homes and it is not changing its position but what about the second send if you carefully observe second send of the clock was moving like this see the seconds of the uh, second end of the clock is continuously changing the position so we can also say this is doing some type of motion this is also doing some kind of motion so this is not necessary that for having motion the body as a whole should move the part of the body can also move that will also be considered under motion but yeah the name will be different which we will see later that under types of motion okay so now the thing is clear if any object changes its position with respect to time then at that object is said to be in motion so i think more mostly things around us are in motion yeah but you can list also the things which are not in motion like house road clock these are not in motion okay now the thing is clear that when any body changes its position it is said to be in motion done now we are going to see types of motion we are going to see types of motion that what are the different different types of motion we can have okay so there is a chart given here you can see one is the rectilinear motion okay we will see in detail later second one is curvilinear motion third one is translatory motion another one is circulatory motion this is oscillatory and this is periodic motion okay so basically main main types of motion which we are concerned with is the rectilinear one this one is circular one and the third one is periodic so these are the three important topics we are going to study rectilinear periodic and circular motion okay now we'll see what are the properties involved in different different types of motion okay so can you see this curvilinear motion also this curvilinear motion is made up of two words curve plus linear and this rectilinear is made from the word linear so linear means so what do you mean by linear linear means in a straight line linear means in a straight line so whenever motion is present in a straight line that is known as rectilinear motion and what is curvilinear curve plus linear matlab it has two components it has two components one is linear that is straight line and one is curve so it is going to it is doing two types of motion moving along a curve as well as moving straight that is known as curvilinear motion but we are not concerned about this we have to focus on rectilinear circular and periodic motion clear now see first of all rectilinear motion so rectilinear motion as i already defined is made from the word line line means a in a straight line so motion in a straight line motion in a straight line is called rectilinear motion okay so suppose i have already given you the example of the car car is moving on a straight road suppose car is moving on a straight road so it is performing a motion which is known as rectilinear motion okay this is known as rectilinear motion done so you can see the examples of rectilinear motion in day to day life the car on a straight road it is moving in a straight line march past of soldiers in a parade they are again doing a straight line motion that is known as rectilinear motion water falling from a height yeah it is also moving along a straight line like this so it is also example of rectilinear motion you can also take the example suppose you are standing on a building you are standing on a building or you have you are just dropped a ball you have just dropped a ball or a stone from this height so what what will be the motion of this stone it will fall on a straight line like this and ultimately reach the ground yes or no so this motion of stone is also example of rectilinear motion so whenever motion is present in a straight line it is considered under rectilinear motion so i hope this is clear okay so the next concept is circular motion next concept is circular motion so what is circular motion now or what is the basic difference between circular motion if i give you the example of a fan like this the fan is blades of a fan are moving yes or no if i talk about this fan as a whole this fan as a whole is not moving yes or no the fan as a whole is not moving but yeah if you see the blades or if you mark a point of this blade suppose i am marking this point 
and I'm observing this point. So I'll observe that this point is rotating like this. It is moving in a this type of path. So this type of path is known as circular motion. So what is the basic property of circular motion? If you carefully observe, if I redraw this diagram, so what you will observe carefully, suppose I'm redrawing this. Okay. So suppose I have marked a point on the blade of the fan and it is doing a motion like this. So what you can see, its distance from the fixed point, which is the axle of the fan is constant everywhere. Its distance from a fixed point, which is axle of the fan in this case is constant. Yeah. So whenever an object performs motion such, such that its position from a fixed point remains same, then that type of motion is considered as circular motion. Getting my point? So what is the circular motion? You can see in a circular motion, an object moves such that its distance from a fixed point remains the same. So whenever the distance of an object from a fixed point remains the same and it is doing some kind of motion, then that will be considered under circular motion. Getting my point? Okay. Now the second example you can see is a giant wheel moving. I think all of you have enjoyed this ride in your childhood days. Yes. Some of you might uh, enjoying this right now also. Yeah. <laughs> So this is giant wheel moving. So this is another example of circular motion. You can see this is the center point from the center point. If you take this wagon, so this wagon is performing a motion in the circle like this. And you can see the distance of this wagon from this axle is always constant at every point. Whatever point you are taking, it is always constant. So this type of motion is also considered under circular motion. Now, what about this third type of motion, which is movement of the planets around the sun. This you can't observe easily. Yeah? This we can't observe easily, obviously, uh, because this is space related issues. Yeah. So movement of the planets around the sun is also example of circular motion in which sun is the, at the center. Sun is at the centers and planets are revolving around the sun in circular orbits or kind of circular orbits. Such like that, their distance from the sun is constant every time during their revolution around the sun. So that's why we are considering it as a circular motion. So what is circular motion? If you have to define that in circular motion or in any motion, if the distance of that object is constant from a fixed point, then that type of motion is known as circular motion. If I talk about the second hand of a clock, which you were observing there, if I take back to there, in this case, now you can see this clock was second hand of a clock was also moving. So if I mark a point here right now, this point will be moving like this. This point will be moving like this during the entire journey of the second hand clock. So you will see its distance from the center of the clock is also constant at every point. So that's why it can be also considered as a circular motion. So I think that difference is clear. What is rectilinear motion? What is circular motion? In rectilinear motion, particle or object moves in a straight line. And in circular motion, it moves such that its distance from a fixed point remains the same. Clear? Now talking about the third type of motion, which is periodic motion. Okay. Now, if I give you one example of circular motion uh, from daily life, it can be like that. If I tie a stone with a thread, this is a stone. So if I tie this stone with a thread and I whirl it, I whirl it with my hand like this. So whatever motion this stone is performing is the circular motion because you can see the distance of the stone from the center of the thread is constant everywhere. So you can say it is performing a motion which is circular motion. But what if I hang this thread from my hand and the stone is here. Now what I'll do, I'll push this stone somewhere here and just drop it. I'll push this stone somewhere here and just drop it. So what will be the motion of the stone now? The motion of the stone will be like this. Yeah. The motion of the stone will be like this. Yes or no? It will do a motion like this. Getting my point? So this type of motion can't be considered under circular motion. This type of motion can be considered under periodic motion. So what is the basic property in periodic motion that the motion is repeating itself. Motion is repeating itself. If you can see the example of pendulum, the setup which I've explained is known as pendulum. When you are hanging a thread and from thread a stone has been hanged. So whenever you are moving it like this, whenever you are moving it like this, this is basically repeating its motion. Yes or no? This is basically repeating its motion again and again. So that type of motion which repeat itself after a certain period of time is called periodic motion. It is written already here. Motion that repeats itself after a period of time is called periodic motion. 
I think this is clear. So this is the example motion of a pendulum. I think you all have seen this uh, vintage clock. This is the hand of a clock which moves in a, this motion like this. First it goes here, come back here, then go towards the right like this. So it is basically repeating its motion. So that's why it is considered under periodic motion. Another example of periodic motion can be a motion of a child on a swing. What is the motion on the swing? It will go upward, come back to the ground and go backward. So it will be like this. So this type of motion is repeating itself on a swing. So that's why it is considered as a periodic motion again. Now talking about the third example, which is branch of a tree moving to and fro. So if you see during windy days or whenever wind is blowing, the branch of a tree glows like this due to the wind. It will move forward, come backward, move forward, come backward, move forward, come backward. So this is again repeating its motion. So that will also be considered under periodic motion. So we have considered three types of motion basically. First is uh, rectilinear means in a straight line. Circular means whenever the distance of a point from a fixed point is constant, then that is considered under circular motion. Third one we have covered is periodic motion. In periodic motion, motion repeat itself after a certain period of time. That is known as periodic motion. Is this thing clear? Okay, so I hope this is clear. Now is, uh, there is one rot uh, motion also which is known as rotational motion. So what is the basic difference between rotational motion and circular motion? Rotational motion versus circular motion. So if I take the example of a fan, these are the blades of an electric fan which are moving. So if I take a point on this fan here, so you will see when the fan is moving, this point is moving like this. So if we are considering this point only or any point on the blades of the plane, then that will be doing a motion known as circular motion. But as a whole, if I take this fan, if I take this fan as a whole body. So this complete fan is not uh, rotating al along any point. Yes or no? This whole fan is not uh, moving along a fixed point or I can say its distance from a fixed point is not constant. So the motion of the complete fan is known as rotational motion and the motion of any part of the blade or any point of the blade is known as circular motion. So if you consider any part of the body that will be considered in the circular motion. Yes or no? And if you are complete acting or if you are considering the complete body, then that will be covered under rotational motion. So the basic difference is clear between rotation and circular. So now there can be some cases where an object can undergo more than one type of motion at the same time. The types of motion we have studied, there can be some objects which can perform the multiple types of motion at the same time. Now see the example of a ball rolling on the ground. This ball is rolling on the ground. So how the ball will roll? Ball will roll like this will do this type of motion like this and it will also move straight yes or no so basically this is a combination of two types of motion one is the circular motion or you can say rotational motion if you are taking the ball as a whole body so it is a combination of rotational or circular motion as well as rectilinear motion yes or no because the ball is also moving in a straight line so that is the component of rectilinear motion and it also rotating like this so this can be taken as a circular motion if you are considering one particle of the ball and this can be taken as a rotational motion if you are taking the ball as a complete body. Clear? Now the second example of the multiple motions is the sewing machine. I think you all have seen in your homes sewing machine. So sewing machine has two types of motion. One is you are moving it with your hands like this. So when you move it like this, what is happening? Any part on this wheel is moving in a circular motion like this. But yeah, when you are moving it, the needle of the swing machine goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, which is used to stitch the cloth. So the needle is somewhere here. So the needle goes up, down, up, down, up, down continuously when you move the wheel of the swing machine. So that the wheel is doing circular motion and that needle is doing motion, which is known as periodic motion, periodic motion, because that motion is repeating itself after a certain interval of time, up, down, up, down, up, down. So that is the combination of circular as well as periodic motion. So you can see here also a ball rolling on ground, a ball rolling on ground shows both rotational or you can say circular as well as rectilinear motion. Then and a swing machine remains at the same location while its wheel moves with a circular motion. The wheel of the swing machine is moving with a circular motion and it also has a needle somewhere here that moves up and down undergoing a periodic motion. 
So these are some of the examples where multiple type of motion can be present at the same times. So we have differentiate between rectilinear motion, uh, circular motion, or you can say rotational motion also if you are considering the body as a whole, and the periodic motion which repeats itself after a certain interval of time. Okay. So I think we have done. We have get the basic concept of all the types of motion. Yeah. Now we will see we will see the motions in much detail, or you can get a better feeling after watching these videos. Okay. So I am showing you some videos to get a better view of the motion. Let's. What this boy wants to do? Boy wants to push the table from A to B. So what he will do? He will push it uh, towards right to get to the. As he pushes the table, it starts moving. Anything around us that moves means that it's in motion. Now what you see? While he was trying to take the table from A to B, he is just pushing the table, and the table was moving. So anything that is moving is in motion. So we can say the table along with the boy both are in motion because both are changing their position actually. Day-to-day life, we see various things moving around us. In our day-to-day -day life, we have already seen various moving things around us that can move. So these are some basic examples: cars running on road, people walking on road, birds flying. These are the examples of moving things around us. That I was saying that the uh, about the sun or around the sun planets undergo revolution. What if I ask you to tell me the definition of motion? How can we define? Now he is asking about the definition of motion. That how can you define the motion? So how we define motion? Whenever the object changes its, its position with the time, then it is said to be in motion. As intuitive as motion of a body. Well, for that we need to look at what exactly happens to a body when it's in motion. Let's say this vehicle moves from point A to point B. Yes. So this car is moving from point A to point B. Let's see what happens. As it's moving towards B, its position in space changes with time. Initially, it was here, then here, and now after some time, it's here. Now you can see. The position of the car is changing with time, so we can say it is in motion. Yes or no? Which is constant. The position of the object and the time too, which is changing everywhere. The change in position of the car and time is called the position of the motion. Now, see, change in position of any body with time is known as motion. So, I hope it is now much more clear. Whenever there is a change in position of a body, we say it is either under motion or under motion. Now we are discussing about types of motion we have already done. It's called the rectilinear motion. Notice that there is a word line in there. So we define this type of motion as a motion in a straight line. So motion in a straight line is known as rectilinear motion, as it can be seen from the word linear or line. Yes, rectilinear motion is nothing but motion in a straight line. So, if an object is moving along this straight line path, we say that it's performing rectilinear motion. Yeah, that is clear. Now, if any object moves in a straight line path, that is said to be in rectilinear motion. For example, when a car is moving in a straight line on a straight road, it's performing rectilinear motion. There is one more thing that I want to discuss with you in this video. Assume you are a very good platform watcher. Okay, so this is the. Basic example of rectilinear motion we have given. So we are now seeing another type of motion in the next video. <clears throat> yeah. Now this is the second type of motion. In the previous video, we studied what motion is. We also saw one type of motion called the rectilinear motion. So we have already seen what is motion and what is the rectilinear motion. Yeah. We have already seen that. It's nothing but straight line motion. In this type of motion, the path of a moving object is a straight line. 
yeah you know in rectilinear motion obviously the path of the object is in a straight line because motion in a straight line is defined as rectilinear motion moving object is circular yes you guessed it correctly if an object is moving in circles it's undergoing circular motion now you can see this car is now moving in a circular track so that's why now its motion name changes to circular motion because it is moving about a certain fixed point in a circle or along the circumference of the circle uh, circumference of the circle is the length of this boundary which is curved so if an object is moving along the circumference of the circle we say it's undergoing circular motion clear Now, if any object moves along the circumference of a circle, then it is said to be in circular motion. Or other definition that if it is moving from a fixed distance, or the distance of this point is fixed from a particular fixed point, then it is said to be in circular motion again. Motion. Yes, we can give. What about the satellites orbiting the Earth? Yes, the you can observe also this satellite is moving around the earth so earth is a fixed point from which the distance of the satellite is constant and it is moving along the circumference of this circle of its orbit yeah so that's why it is also performing circular motion what are the examples of circular motion can you see the circles you can see the motion of this object which is whirling around is in a circle only if you can imagine the fixed point is at the center and it is moving in a circular motion that the object is performing circular motion notice that the distance of the stone from your hand is always the same so the distance of the stone from your hand is always the same this was the third example moving fan which is also performing circular motion this is also undergoing circular motion first let's all become circular motion of the fan So we can say that the blades of the fan are also undergoing. Now you can see if I, if we have marked one point on the fan, then that point is moving in a circular direction. So it is performing circular motion basically. Now what about the fan as a whole? Now yeah. If you have taken the fan as a whole single object, now can you say the fan is moving in circles? Obviously, no. The fan is not moving as a complete body. Only the part of the fan, which was which we have marked on the blade, is moving in a circular motion. But as the complete fan, it is not moving. Friends of a circle, but which motion is it performing then? Yeah. Now, which motion is performed because it is not moving along the circumference of any circle as a whole body. So that motion is known as rotational motion. If you are taking the body as a whole, I'm going rotational motion. Before actually defining this type of motion, let's try to understand it first. Okay. Now I think this type of motion is clear. Yeah, rotational motion is also clear to you. Yeah. So I hope we have covered all the basic types of motion needed for you that are rectilinear motion means motion in a straight line. second one was circular motion motion along the circumference of a circle or you can say that if the position of a body from a fixed point remains constant then that type of motion is known as circular motion third one was the periodic motion in which the body repeats its motion after certain interval of time we seen in the second end of a go no pendulum of a clock yeah swing of a go uh, swing of a child yeah moving to and fro and the branches of a tree moving to and fro with the wind yeah and that's the last example we see was the rotational motion if you are taking the body as a whole then that type of motion is known as rotational motion so i hope that this concept is clear that what is motion change in position of any object with time what are the different types of motion we have already seen that in detail so i hope it is clear now you can also categorize after the class perform one activity then try to list the objects around you around you that which are moving which are not moving so you will be able to identify which objects are in motion which objects are not in motion the objects which are moving with time are in motion and the other ones are in not in motion so do that activity after the class so i hope all the concepts i teased in the class are clear to you so thank you so much stay safe and enjoy 
yeah but remember one thing if you get any type of doubt after this class or at any point of time you can refer to the forum at the ask iitns website you can post your doubts there and you will get the answer to your doubts there okay so thank you so much bye Thank you.